what is happening, fishing friends? Welcome to another episode of Debo's Fishing. Does anybody want to take a stab at what we're talking about today? The Stinko! Lego! I know that intro was a little aggressive, but it's because I'm excited because I've had a lot of people ask me, well, I just got my new rod and reel, but what would you recommend for baits? Well, if you would like to see me do a whole video on putting a box together, let me know in the comments below. It's actually something I have planned. I think it'll be pretty fun. But today is just going to focus on one lure. The one lure that I would confidently give any new bass angler and say, yes, you will catch fish on this. It is the stick bait or Cinco, more commonly referred to as. It's kind of like the whole chatterbait versus bladed jig or Kleenex versus facial tissue. In today's video, we're going to keep it pretty simple. You don't want to be a beginner and start out looking at 75 different ways to rig it and how do I fish it in line and all this and that stuff. We're going to keep it simple and look at what are they and why do people use them? How are we going to rig these? And when and where are we going to throw them? So let's get started. So what are they and why do anglers throw them? Well, as the name implies, the stick bait is really just a soft plastic shaped like a stick. It's a Stick bait, go stick bait, go stick bait. There's no real crazy action to it. It doesn't have a big crazy tail. It literally just does a real subtle shimmy on the way down. And that's really the key to this bait's success. It catches fish, it catches numbers of fish, and there's different ways, as you can see, to make it a more aggressive big fish catching bait. In fact, the best day I had last year was throwing a stick bait exactly like this. My buddy and I ran Dizzle. Had an awesome day, and between us we caught almost 80 fish, most all of them coming off of stick baits. I love the bait and think it's perfect for new bass anglers. Now there's a lot of people out there that'll say, stay away from the stick bait, it only catches tiny fish. Well, there's ways that you can change that. When you look at the stick bait, it comes in a variety of different sizes, up from a 3 inch to a, this is a 4 inch, a 5 inch, and this is probably the most common size that uh, the anglers throw. When you hear somebody talking about, yeah, I was throwing a stick bait, it's usually this, a regular 5 inch stick bait. Um, but they also make the, the larger 6-inch. And you can see the difference. It's a girthier, longer bait. So there are ways to make this finesse presentation a little bit beefier so you can still try to target bigger fish. Now, they not only come in different sizes, but different styles. And this is something that I've really been doing. Uh, this is the Reaction Innovations Pocket Rocket. And this was honestly the bait that I threw most of last year. Uh, it's just a little bit different look. Than your standard stick bait and it's got a little different shimmy on the way down it's got a little bit wider and more of a wobble you can see it's got a little bit larger ribs as opposed to just the little lines it's just a little bit different look a little different shape and i think those little small things make a difference now i might be crazy it might just be a confidence thing and it makes me throw out more but i believe the small little changes do make a difference you can even get into something like this this is the grande bass trophy stick um, i've not used this yet i just picked some up but look at that look at that little tail Talk about clear water presentations where they might come up on it and want to eat it, and then, oh, they see that, yeah. Now, the whole point of that intro was to show you that there are lots of companies out there that make a stick bait. Probably the most common, and a lot of people tell you to get the best one on the market, is the Gary Yamamoto stick bait, and they are. They are killer stick baits. They have a nice high salt content in them. However, the durability on these is questionable. It can oftentimes be one fish that you've caught on, and you've ripped your stick bait in half, and you have to go to a new one. And that gets pretty expensive. These are, you know, six-ish dollars for a pack of them. A lot of new bass anglers just don't have that type of money, so that's something to consider. Speaking of the salt content in the Gary Yamamoto stick bait, that's something I pay close attention to. If you're not going to get the Yamamoto style, when you look at the stick baits, make sure that when you take one of the pack, they don't do this. As you can see, inside there... You don't see any grains or crystals. It's real stretchy. That means this has a real low salt content in it. This nearly almost floats, and the fall rate on it is extremely, extremely slow. I usually opt to something like this. This is actually a Bass Pro Shop Sticko. And when you pull this apart, see how hard that is? It barely moves. And when you look in there, it kind of changes color. You can see all the little crystals inside there. That means this is infused with salt, and that's what I go after. It increases the fall rate. Gives it a good wobble. It's not something that's just going to kind of float there. And... So how do you rig these things? Well, I personally stick to the two most common methods. The weightless Texas rig and the wacky rig. Now, the weightless Texas rig is awesome because it's just a nice, slender presentation. I personally run mine on a 7-foot medium-heavy rod with a 7 0 to one retrieve reel and 15 to 20-pound fluorocarbon, just depending. My hook of choice is usually going to be a 4 aught 
extra wide gap heavy wire hook. Helps you get a little bit more casting distance when you're running it weightless, and I think it fits perfect for just the regular five inch Senko. Now, when I rig these up, I wanna make sure that I keep this good and straight, and there's a couple different ways to rig this. The first one, the most common way you'll hear people is just to barely run that hook through and pass the barb. When you come down here, it's just gonna barely sit on the, the top of that hook just under the eye, and then you'll rig it straight. So you'll come straight through here, lay it flat. Now, if I ever run it like this, I always wanna use the trialing knot. For me, it's my go-to knot whenever I'm fishing around grass because that tag end sticks back. You don't get a whole bunch of moss and gunk stuck on the front of your thing and have to spend half your day clearing that off. So as a new angler, that's a really good tip. Use that trialing knot, it'll save you a bunch of clearing time. Now, as an alternative to that, one thing that a lot of people don't think about because when you run Texas rigs, that's how you always run it. So your sinker sits nice and flush to the eye of your hook. But since I'm not running a weight on it, I don't have to be that precise. I can actually go down just almost to the bend of the hook with a long heavy wire extra wide gap like this. And what that's going to do is completely hide and bury the eye of my hook. So now I don't even have to worry about the line tie or anything. That's all hidden down within the bait. I can still rig it nice and straight, just like that. Now I should probably show you, when I rig my Texas rig, I always go straight through and skin hook it on the backside. And what that means is I'll just lay my hook right next to the bait, mark it with my thumb, and come straight through the middle of my bait. That's gonna give me just a little bit of loose here. What I'm gonna do with that is just pull it up towards the head of my hook, the eye of the hook, and just allow that to come back and skin hook. Just barely sit on there. That's gonna give me a real nice straight presentation. You wanna always make sure you rig your stick baits nice and straight, so that way it's got a good wobble when it comes down. If you're rigging it all weird, like if I were just to take this and say, oh, I don't know, here looks good, it's not gonna have a real good action falling like that. It's gonna be pretty messed up. Next up is the wacky rig. Now, why would you go to a wacky rig? What the heck is a wacky rig? Well, the wacky rig is simply taking a hook. This happens to be a three-op finesse hook with the weed guard. I like the weed guard because I fish around so much grass. This little bit does help, and it's not a real heavy wire. It's really fine. I know a lot of guys will say, well, you don't wanna go with that. It messes up your hookup ratio, but look, once you get this on there, I mean, just the littlest movement moves that. I don't notice any difference in my hookup ratio. And it just helps keep gunk out of my hook. Now to rig the bait wacky, all you're gonna do is take that hook, put it in the middle of the bait perpendicular to it. So you're gonna get it something that looks like that. Now a much different presentation. This presentation on the way down definitely wobbles more. You get more side to side that kind of this action out of the sides of it. You get a lot more out of that out of this rig. Now you'll notice though, look how it's as soon as a fish, yeah you lose a lot of baits this way, they get tore up. So for me, it's imperative that you have a wacky tool. All this is is a hollow little tube with little rubber bands. And what this allows you to do is, let me show you. It's a very simple tool. All you do is insert the stick bait into the front of the tool, like so, about halfway where you want that hook to go. I always take two rings. Now some people just take one and I'll show you why here in just a second. I slide my two rings all the way up to the tube and onto the middle of the bait. I've got it marked about, there's the middle. Take them off. Now, I've got that, well, I've got those in the middle of the bait. Now, you would notice if I, let's say I just put one there and I rig this on, it's gonna sit like that. I personally don't like that in case the fish were to grab it here and do something or here and the bait was kind of messed up in the way. I just don't like it sitting parallel to the bait like that. I like to ensure that it stays perpendicular to it. So what you will do is take these two little round O-rings and cross them over to make an X like this, or like this. So you can see I've just taken those two O-rings and made an X. And what I'll do is I'll take my hook and run it straight through both sides of that X, like so. Now, you'll notice when I get this up close, those two X's make it so that hook can't spin side to side. It's always gonna stay perpendicular to the bait like this. So if a fish grabs it this way, fish grabs it this way, this way, it doesn't matter. They're always gonna be getting that hook up. And that's the way I like to rig my wacky rig. Now you'll notice, it's one of the benefits of this way is that it's got a lot more shake to it. Now, benefits. Well, how would you choose one over the other? Let's take a look. The Wacky Rig and the Texas Rig. When and where do I fish the Senko? Well, I think the Senko really does shine in the summer. It's a real finessey approach that's not a lot of action, not a lot of big aggressive things. When those bass are lethargic, they're tucked up you know, in the shade, they don't want to be out in the heat. You know where the bass are, but they just don't want to bite a lot of times. And this is just such a non-intrusive bait, 
they just grab it. It's a quick, easy meal. It's right there. But I really fish these two rigs differently. To me, the wacky style I only go to when the bite is super, super tough. Now, for a lot of people, it's their go-to, and that's fine. But I really go to this when the bite is just absolutely horrible because there are times when they will bite this when they won't bite this for whatever reason. Maybe it's just because it's got a little bit more action to it. Also, with this, you can get the little wacky jig heads. So if you want to cover a little bit more water, get that bait to fall a little bit faster and just keep presenting it to different spots, I will use this. I do fish this on spinning tackle. Uh, it's going to be a 20-pound braid this year to a fluorocarbon leader, the 8 10 pound probably, but I fish this on a spinning reel. Um, now, if it's real windy, I can use that. If I want to cover a little bit more water, um, you can go to a weighted jig head, but I use this when the bite is really, really tough. Now, honestly, like I said, I've got a rod and reel combo dedicated to a weightless stick bait, a weightless Texas rig, because to me, this bait truly shines as a follow-up bait. It's got a real good slim profile. So if I'm, you know, fishing a moving bait by some cover, you know, brush, this is going to slip right in there. I'm always going to follow up. What I mean by follow up is I'll use this as a follow up to my moving bait. I'm using a search bait. I'm throwing, let's say, a chatter bait. A fish comes out and hits the chatter bait, but doesn't really take it all the way. If I saw that fish and know where it's at, I can follow up with something like this. And oftentimes I'm going to get that bite. I love to frog in the summer, but sometimes they just hit it and just don't commit. But this, if you follow up after a frog blow up with this, eight times out of 10, you're gonna get that fish. Fishing on a bait caster so I can be real precise with it. I'm fishing little holes in the grass. I can pitch this up in there and get it right in those holes. It's a lot harder for me to do that with a spinning reel. If you're comfortable with that, go for it. So let me know in the comments below, if you're a newer bass angler, do you fish the stick bait? Why or why not? If you have more questions about the stick bait, let me know in the comment section below as well because with the weather warming up, you're not gonna have to put up with hand model Debo. Soon, soon I will be out on the water showing you how to actually do these techniques and catching fish. Yes, believe it or not, I actually do catch fish. So let me know in the comment section below if you have any other suggestions for videos that you wanna see. I love talking to everybody in the comments and for hearing from everyone. I've met some really cool people and I truly appreciate the support from everyone. So, tie one of these on, try it. I hope this helped you out. Until next time. Dang, that was just as aggressive as the beginning. Until next time.